Okay, hi everyone, this is Mike Heydrich. I'm going to discuss configuring a second Gecko G540 that I'm going to use for motion for my 3D printer and eventually a fourth axis lathe. So, this box that's sitting on top of my bed is a controller that I built that's going to be just for the uh, 3D printer. So, what you're seeing is the G540 on the outside, you're seeing a couple of Nuri's. Uh, thermocoupler and uh, thermistor monitoring boards, those are the LEDs on the right side. Um, the power supply is 48 volt for the Gecko and then there's a 12 volt 30 amp power supply that's going to drive the heated bed in the hot end. Um, also on the bed you can see the little NEMA 17 motor uh, that's part of the MBE extruder that I got from QUBD in Chelsea. So um, I'm going to pan over here to my monitor showing mock what I've done is installed a second parallel port. I bought the uh, PMDX uh, modified Rosewill RC04 card from PMDX um, so that I could install it in my computer and not really have any issues uh, with the parallel port. So the first thing you need to do is you need to do the configuration of that card. So what I did was when I installed it um, 0XA000 is the port address for that card and I think you can see it on the screen I moved all of my first four axes, 1, 2, 3, and 4 to that card and made it port number 1 um, Mock seems to like that uh, A000 port address being on port 1 so once I did that then I had full functionality of my machine coming off the new card then 0x378 is my built-in parallel port. Um, I made that uh, port number two. Um, so that's what's going to drive the second G540. Um, the stuff on the right uh, for Modbus is what I use to control my 2.2 uh, kilowatt electro spindle, water cooled spindle, and BFD. So don't pay, don't worry about that. Um, let's go to motor outputs. So you'll see that. All the first four axes um, are all on step port one, direction port one. And I went ahead and moved my slaved uh, gantry axis to B because I think in the 3D printer software it's going to be easier if I make my 3D printer uh, axis A. So Y and B are now slaved together. You can see that on the on the screen there. Also, you'll see that. For A axis, um, step pins two and three, but the important note is that it's step port number two and direction port number two. And that's what's going to drive that extra axis off that second G540. Now, um, all, pretty much everything else stays the same uh, for your Gecko setup if you have a normally working uh, four axis machine. You shouldn't have to really change anything else. So the other thing that I did is I, I went ahead and put some motor tuning. I don't really know the proper motor tuning yet. That's not really important at this point. I just really want to show that I have motion coming off that second G540. Um, so this is my A axis, which is now uh, going to drive the NEMA 17. So I'm going to pan back over here and we'll show you the NEMA 17 again. I'll zoom in a little bit. I don't think it'll let me zoom in the video mode, but um, you should be able to see motion. So I've got a, a Xbox 360 pendant that I use, and I went ahead and configured it. So if I go ahead and uh, hit reset here on mock, you should be able to see the motion. Hopefully, the, it's you can see it. I should have put a little flag on it for you guys so that you could see it move easier. But hopefully, it'll zoom in. Um, and then also just to show I still have normal motion of my machine all the same time and you can see that uh, I had zeroed out my axis is on the DRO and you can see that they're now changed um, as I uh, move them you'll see the motion moving here's the, uh, the rest of the axis so once you make those configuration changes, as long as your Gecko is wired up correctly and 
Um, another important note, you need to solder in the correct resistor on ports or on pins one and uh, one and five on the DB9 for the uh, Gecko G540. Um, in this case, the NEMA 17 that I have is 1.2 amps, uh, so um, I used a, a 1.2K resistor uh, on port on pins one and five soldered inside the DB9. That's the that's the shell that goes into the G540. Um, you can see the gray. It's one of Aaron's cables. I just cut the end off because his come with a 3.5K resistor in them, which isn't correct for this little NEMA 17. Um, and then I just went ahead and soldered on a regular DB9 shell uh, over the four wires. So you'll use uh, pins 7, 8, 9, and or, uh, 6, 7, and 8, and 9 on the DB9 for wiring up the NEMA 17. In this case, um, uh, I believe it was green and black uh, were on 8 and 9 and red and blue on this little NEMA 17 is on pins 7 and 8. Um, the way to test that is just to uh, cross two wires on the NEMA 17 and you should feel resistance on when you try to spin the shaft. Um, if you don't cross two other pairs and you should feel this is a standard four wire NEMA 17 motor. Okay, everyone, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll be in touch when I get more done on the conversion. Oh, one other thing to point out. You can see coming off my spindle there, uh, the uh, uh, 1530 extrusion going up in the air with the, uh, the plate and the drop plate. That's where it's going to be right here. That's where I'm going to mount the 3D printer um, on my axis so that it, it can slide up and down out of the way. You can still use it as a normal... Uh, CNC router and then uh, I can drop that plate down and then use the 3d printer. That's what I'm at least attempt. Okay, everyone have a great night